Hi, everyone. Welcome. Hello. You're calling us the Gut Hormone Mood Talks with Sophie and Kylene. <laughs> Yeah, that's perfect. I love that. <laughs> Sophie is going to share. Uh, she has a little presentation for you about PMS, and then we're going to answer some of your questions. We do have to uh, get off uh, right a little bit before two, so we're going to keep it fairly short today. Um, yeah, but we're excited to be here. So, Sophie, take it away. What did you want to talk about today? So, I yeah. I thought we would kind of narrow in on that particular topic in case you're having painful cramps and you want to know what can I do about it. So let's dive into that. Um, I am putting together like a little PDF type thing for you guys and I will share that with you as soon as it's ready. But let's kind of talk through like why this happens and what can what do we have control over as as women. So first and foremost, I always think it's important to know like the scientific name for things so that when you're talking to a provider, you are speaking in their language so that they can help you even further. So when we have period pain, it's called dysmenorrhea, dysmenorrhea, and there is primary and there is secondary dysmenorrhea. So primary dysmenorrhea, pain, painful periods, primary is like what you probably would think of, which is just like cramps related to menstruation. Um, and and secondary is due to a medical condition like fibroids, endometriosis, adenomyosis, cysts, um, pelvic inflammatory de disease, um, or like an ST STD like chlamydia or gonorrhea. Um, there's also been a lot of reports coming out um, with the copper IUD causing extreme cramps, especially in the first three to six months. So I I'll also put that into kind of like a secondary painful period cause. So what I wanted to talk about today was like really that primary cause so that like, why does that happen? You know, if you, if you aren't dealing with like endo or fibroids or something like that, why, why, why would one have painful periods? So the main mechanism at play is something called prostaglandins. Now there's anti-inflammatory and inflammatory prostaglandins and we need a balance just like everything else in this amazing body of ours. Um, and these prostaglandins are hormone-like substances that cause the uterus to contract. And that's when you release that endometrial lining and you bleed, there's a contraction going on. And it makes sense, right? If there's too many of the inflammatory ones, it could be more painful. So the balance we can find is how can I um, get the, the kind of good inflammatory ones and the bad ones down so that I'm not in so much pain. So, um, okay. Omegas? Omegas, yes, omegas are on the list. So, okay, so I think it's important here to be like, I'm gonna go micro in a second of like omegas and things like that, but macro, Kylene and I are always talking about basically the DRESS program, diet, rest, exercise, stress reduction, supplementation, the five kind of pillars of health, right? So in our Empower Her program, we teach women how to support their you know, their sleep, their stress reduction, how to eat right for their cycles, um, what and, and, and for their gut health and all these things. But we also do testing to find out any hidden sources of infection or inflammation. So it is important to know that there's a lot you can do on your own and then sometimes you need extra help and that's totally fine and that's what we're here for to help answer your questions. But if you haven't really like gotten the handle on your stress at all or you're not sleeping, know that those things really do impact period pain as well. So before you dive down like into the micro that I am about to go into, just check with yourself like, hey, am I, am I sleeping? Am I managing stress? You know, am I moving my body? These kind of basic things, they impact all parts of our health, including our hormones and therefore our menstrual period pain. Cool. Makes sense? Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully that makes sense. But yeah, I think it's really important to always remember the big picture because um, we can get, like we've talked about this recently, we can get so focused on like testing and supplements and stuff like that. And then, um, hello, we're forgetting to like drink water and get enough sleep and move our bodies throughout the day and like all these basic things. And if these aren't in play, it, the foundation is like nutritional lifestyle. So yeah, all this other stuff can help, but if we don't have nutritional lifestyle in check, we always have to start there. Yes, absolutely. 
So once we have nutrition and lifestyle in check, and I'm going to talk about food in a second too, because someone asked about that, but I wanted to just talk about like kind of immediate short-term relief if you're having cramps and then kind of like, like longer term lifestyle specifics for, for cramps. So in the moment, like if you're like, I always have painful cramps and I'm about to get my period tomorrow, what do I do? Um, some things you could do run out to the store and grab. If you haven't already gotten a heating pad, girl, go get a heating pad. <laughs> Step number one. I feel like most people know that one, but like it's worth reminding, right? Because it's so comfortable. Um, but number two would be some magnesium oil. So magnesium oil will, if you put that on the night before you're expecting to have cramps and you kind of keep that on consistently through your menstrual period, it, it, through your cycle, through the bleeding part of your cycle, it will really help. So that is fire. <laughs> I love magnesium oil. Um, do you have a brand that you like, Kylene? I don't have one that um, I- I love oil. There's also a topical spray. Um, and I can't remember the name of that one either. Maybe we should post it in links or something, but- but yeah, this magnesium yeah. in general is like super, it can be super helpful because most people are deficient. And if you are having inflammation or cramps or things like that, like magnesium plays a role in all these processes and helping your muscles relax and all these different things. And so, yeah, it's definitely an important one for sure. Pretty much in any yeah, and I, spray, topical oil, ingested, like it's all yeah. over. And we're going to talk about ingesting in a second and what like quantities to look out for, what kinds um, for period pain. Um, but the oil is really helpful in the moment. So that's something. Um, and I can look up the brand that I have. I, I got it from my acupuncture. So it's like, kind of, like more expensive, like medical grade kind of magnesium oil. But I'll look that up for you guys. Um, okay. Avoid coffee. So coffee causes cramps to get worse. So um, if you're experiencing really painful cramps and then you drink a bunch of caffeine, you might have worse cramps. And actually, last period, I actually had this happen to me. I was like, I was good. I didn't have any cramps. And then I had coffee and like an hour later, <laughs> my cramps were horrible. Um, and so I like, I did truly experience that very stark difference. Um, so that's, that's a really, hopefully pretty easy way for you to make your cramps less severe. And then another thing you can do is cramp bark. So there's a really great brand called Daloon and I'll drop that in. I'll drop um, like, a, I think I have a discount code with them. They, they have like specific menstrual health products and supplements. And one of them has cramp bark in it. And that is an, an herb that's been around for many, many years. And you can just um, have that herb and some people do it a few days before their cycle and that's it. Other people do it throughout the month to kind of help. And it's just a way that will help you to not cramp up so much. So those are kind of like quick, quick hits. But then in terms of like long-term life strategies, right? Um, there's a couple that Kylie already mentioned. So, um, but let's start with diet. So we're big fans of anti-inflammatory lifestyle and diet. What does that mean? Um, too much to talk about today, but like here's some of things to think about, like where can I eliminate foods that are super inflammatory? Most of you are on our workshop. We talked a lot about removing gluten, a little bit about re removing dairy. I can tell you that dairy, K A, uh, A1 cow's dairy is like one of the most inflammatory menstrual connection pain things. <laughs> so yeah, gluten, gluten, dairy, gluten, dairy, and processed sugar, like they all cause inflammation in the body. Like there's really not no not much debate about it. I should I should clarify like conventional dairy, like pasteurized milk, things like that. Um, yeah, and specifically that A one cow's dairy. Um, so yeah, so that like that stuff that we just pick up at the store can be pretty inflammatory. And ouch. Um, so those those are things like you think about removing, you know, for like inflammatory support. And then for in terms of adding things in, like you can think about herbs like turmeric and ginger or antioxidants, right? Like pomegranates and organic berries and um, leafy greens, right? Like what are the someone asked, like, what are the foods I could be eating to support cramps? It's like, well, let's think like full time, like full time, not just like during that week, but like over about two to three months, you'll, you should see a change in your menstrual pain if you um, try to eat an anti-inflammatory diet. And it takes tweaking, and that's why we have the Empower Her program, because there's so many <laughs> micro questions we right. realize you guys have yeah. um, about food, but like that's just a general guideline to think about. Yeah. And then omega-3 fatty acids. So these are huge. Um, a, 
approximately a dose of about 2,000 milligrams daily can achieve anti-inflammatory effects. Um, usually takes about, again, two months to see an effect of consistent use. So you want to make sure you get a good quality omega-3. Um, I love the brand Nordic Naturals. Um, <laughs> Kylie likes that too. Um, Rosita is another good one. Um, but yeah, I like those two brands pretty much. And that I've seen over time to really help with inflammation across the board, but also with period cramps. Yeah, for sure. And then moving right along to magnesium. So we talked about magnesium oil, but like Eileen said, most people, like 70% of people, maybe more, are deficient in magnesium. So magnesium glycinate, really absorbable form, highly recommended and then tested for period cramps at a dose of 300 milligrams nightly throughout the month, and then doubling that dose. So basically two doses of 300, so a total of 600, about, um, five five days before your cycle and during basically the first three days when cramping is the most severe so basically you're you're at 300 and then you would jump up to maybe 600 for about eight days of the of the month and that's been shown to help women with the cramps um zinc is another one um it's a potent anti-inflammatory supplement or you know, not it's you can take it as a supplement or in food, but it's a nutrient that is very anti-inflammatory and antioxidant. And it's been shown to reduce period pain in the days leading up to the menstrual cycle, 30, about 30 milligrams, four to five days before your cycle um, has been shown in studies to decrease, to, decre to decrease prostaglandins, those things that cause the pain, okay? Um, do not take zinc on an empty stomach. It can make you feel nauseous. And also know that there are very great foods that, um, have lots of zinc in them like oysters and shellfish and mussels and red meat so if you are a fish or a meat eater meat eater there are a lot of foods you can also get um oh this person's like right behind me <laughs> um you can also get a lot from like um pumpkin seeds so those are like three those are the three supplements but i also am really big fan of throughout the month specifically between ovulation and getting your period doing an um a castor oil pack yeah huge hugely helpful <laughs> and here's where um some of this can overlap with some other issues as well so um castor oil and magnesium those can really help with um, constipation and inflammation and if you are having if you're constipated or inflamed like you're gonna have a crappy period so um you know anything that's causing inflammation or pressure like down in that area is not going to help the process um, so you need to be pooping easily like every single day and things like castor oil and um, magnesium are going to help both of those processes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, if you're constipated and your hormones are getting all screwed up, then you're, you know, because they're getting backed up and not getting out of your colon. Yay, estrogen dominance, which leads to really pain cycles. <laughs> so, yeah. well, you know, um, just, uh, hey, you usually go cramps like way down in your lower abdomen, kind of where your poop is stored in your colon before it comes out. And so it's like when you're constipated, it actually puts pressure on the sides of your colon and that is not, it's inflammatory and it's not comfortable and it's not going to help the process. You're going to be way more sensitive to any level of inflammation during your cycle. So let's address all of it as opposed to just thinking, oh, it's just my hormones. Well, it might not be. You might have like some inflammation down there that's contributing to the problem. That's actually a really good point. And like to know that when our estrogen plummets before our cycle and during our cycle, we actually feel more pain. Estrogen is actually really helpful at blocking pain. So things hurt more, um, but it's when it gets to the place where you have to be medicated or you can't work or things like that are going on that it's like, this is a sign that something needs to be addressed. Whether it be just kind of what we'll call maybe like the basic inflammation stuff or like getting a proper diagnosis with a skilled physician around fibroids and endometriosis and I just had you know I just had a client who um we had we had done all these on all the things and she was feeling slightly better but it was still debilitating and at that point after a few months I was like look you need to go and check and see if you have like endo and she actually just had her endo excision surgery a couple of days ago and found out she had stage four endometriosis and her um her organs were actually like fused together so like 
I say all that not to scare the crap out of you, but because I see like women struggle for years thinking that they just have to like deal with this pain and that this is just, you know, they're just bad pain tolerance and all these things. And honestly, that's all crap. And like, if there was one thing I could change about like the way women um, think they have to deal with this, it would be, it would be putting up with pain and symptoms. Yeah. So. And can I just say something really quickly? Um, I know that these changes can be really hard, especially if you do have significant pain because um, you may be using some of these things like sugar or caffeine as like almost like coping mechanisms, right? Like this makes me feel better or I really, really enjoy it. And my life is miserable yeah. to an extent because I, I have so much inflammation and pain and I like these things. They make me happy. And we don't want to take away happiness, um, but just recognize that things like this, I mean, they can have a very significant impact within two to three months. And so if you're willing to try to, you know, I would, if you're really in a lot of pain, I would try, you know, giving up caffeine, giving up sugar, being like really strict about it for a minimum of three months and see how you feel and add in some fish oil and stuff like that. And just be like uber consistent and then take notes on how your periods go and how your cramping goes and how your moods are. Um, because it, it just ask yourself a question like, is enjoying this coffee um, you know, more important to me than, um, you know, having a, a pain-free cycle and, you know, not having to like stop my life because I need to be in bed that day. And one other thing with that too, is there are different levels of coffee. So, um, there may even be some, um, there may even be some thing to say for, you know, dropping like a latte with sugar and syrups that have chemicals in it and just going to straight organic black coffee like as a transitionary piece. So there's a lot of ways to do it. Um, but just kind of think about that. I know that that's hard. Yeah, it is. It's really challenging. And like you, you know, you can't be perfect all the time, you know, but this is like, I think it's like information is power. And then you can, uh, my client inspired me because she repeated back what I say all the time, which is like, once you know what's kind of your triggers, then you have control because you are empowered with the knowledge of what works for you and what doesn't. And once you know that, then it's your choice, yeah. you know? Um, and no one can judge you for that. Like, at least you know what works for you and doesn't. Right. Um, <laughs> so then you get to decide, you know, it's kind of like for me, I know if I have like a bunch of dairy, I'm going to break out yeah. <laughs> like a few days later. <laughs> I recently discovered that I, if I do like a Starbucks coffee or um, something that has a syrup that has um, corn syrup in it, which like I always would get a, a cafe mocha as a treat from Starbucks and it has corn syrup in the, I guess, mocha syrup or whatever. And I just realized if I get those coffees, I'm going to have joint pain now. And I'm like, okay, no thanks. That is very unpleasant. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, but then of course, like if you're in that situation where, you know, you're driving across country, like I keep doing, <laughs> and you need, you want some coffee. You're like, all right, well, I'm going to have some joint pain then. Or, or I'm going to get an Earl Grey tea instead because I don't want joint pain. And then you're like, you're just kind of, you're making a choice with information um, yeah, exactly. as opposed to guessing in the dark. So well, what I hope this was helpful. What had happened mm -hmm. was I was treating myself a few too many times one week. And I was like, <laughs> what, what is happening? Like, this really hurts. And I would lay down at night and my joint, my knees would hurt. And I was like, what? And then I was, I looked at the ingredients and I was like, I bet it's a corn syrup. And then I, I think I tried it later um, and did it again. And sure enough, I was like, yep, it's, it's, co it's coffee syrup with joint pain. So mm. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Well, guys, I hope this was really helpful. I hope um, this gave you some ideas. Um, we are going to try and do these lives once a week at around 1.30 on Fridays. So if there is like a specific topic that you want these little like micro trainings on, just let us know. And we're happy to provide as much information as we um, have at our fingertips so that you guys have it at your fingertips. Um, this is this group is really for information and empowerment um, and helping you achieve your health goals. So like any questions you have, any micro trainings you want to see, just let us know. We'll plan it out and we'll we'll give you what we can. And yeah, um, yeah. anything else, Kylie? No, I think that's it. So I, we know that um, not everybody can watch live. So if you have questions or you have a suggestion for next week that you want to learn about, just drop them below and we will check it out. Awesome. Right. Have a good weekend, everybody. Bye, guys.